Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I read Marx and Engels' The Communist Manifesto when I was 17, and I got detention for it. Actually, I got the detention for reading it in class, and then got a lecture for being interested in its subversive un-American content by the assistant principal, while I was in detention. The details are irrelevant. I didn't read it because I was a Marx fan, I read it just because I knew it was subversive. I read Mein Kampf a few years later, for the same reason. I didn't become a fan of Hitler as a result, but I did learn a lot about him and National Socialism, and in high school, after reading the manifesto, I learned a bit about communism. I remember being impressed with the famous quote, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs, a Marx quote, but from a different writing. At the time, I did not understand its implications. It sounded nice without digging too deep. It seems we are tricked by this idea of sounding nice when we first hear of something, like CBDCs, UBIs, or digital IDs, sounds pretty good, eh? No one seems to look at the implications. We do of course, but most sheep do not. Yeah, nice, steal from the rich, and give to the poor. Everyone loved Robin Hood. He was one of the good guys. Everyone assumes that anyone with money got it by stealing from the poor. Sure, some do that, but probably not as common in a simple old-world capitalist country, not directly at least, and probably much more common in a communist one, robbing from the poor, robbing from everyone, and certainly the name of the game in the oncoming global cap economy, to borrow C.J. Hopkins' term. One day you loan nothing, and you'll be happy. I'm sure about the first part of the sentence, and not so sure about the second part. Not only does the concept from each according to his ability to each according to his needs simply not work, but any system based on such things is wide open to corruption. I won't go into any detail as to why communism as Marx proposed is a whack system, there are plenty of books out there on that subject. What I do want to comment on is why so many people don't believe it is whacked. Show a liberal that Marx sentence, and I will bet you they will say, sure, why not? Yeah, sure they like the sound of it, until the state comes along, and starts shaving off their opulence, and distributing it to the ones they think should get it instead of them, according to their needs. First of all, no one is yet suffering deeply as we transition to totalitarianism with a communist bent. People think that the loss of freedoms is analogous to removing traffic laws. It isn't. People say, well, I don't have a problem being a law-abiding citizen, I don't need to have the right to do anything I want. That is a naive statement. The rights people lose under a communist-like system is a bit more harsh than that. It is important to note that what we are being led into is not the communism of Marx, Lenin, or Mao. It is a new kind. Exactly what, I am not sure, but it is different. A new system of collectivization may not, at least at first, carry any of the stereotypical communism oppressions that everyone thinks of when they think of communism. And yes, many people may be tolerant of it, again, at least for a while. Think of Orwell's 1984, then compare that dismal state to Huxley's Brave New World, or even Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. 1984 is an example of the end-term condition of an oppressed culture. In 1984, the disease has deeply set in, and the parasite of communism totalitarianism is about to destroy its host. Brave New World and Fahrenheit 451 are examples of cultures still in the early stages of a structure that is sucking the soul out of people, but the host, the people, are not yet dead. What they all have in common, though, as well as what is in common with today's dystopia, is a central control of the masses. This is now accomplished differently. Cell phone obsession, media takeover, social media, the label of misinformation on anything contrary to the narrative. 
Sure, the old mainstays of propaganda and censoring of speech are still part of it all, but again, it all has a slightly different spin to it. The goal of the parasite is to keep the host alive as long as possible, in order to benefit from it. Certainly, in our case, the masses can be called and kept just sick enough that they are compliant and easily manipulated, but, as Schwab says, the intent is to keep what's left of us happy, or so they hope, at least until they are very well ensconced in the new culture. The style of communism that is upon us, and we do have to come up with a better word now that it no longer has the intention of making community, is designed to suck just enough out of us that we don't know we are being depleted of life. The perpetrators know nothing of soul, therefore, they care nothing of it. We will lose our soul quicker than losing our bodies as a result of the slow drain. We will become depressed, despondent, unempathic, unloving, and anxious, as well as a litany of other mental and emotional maladies. Although our masters will intend to keep our body just on the edge of functioning, in order to return to them what they desire, we will sooner than later collapse internally. The soul will starve. We are already seeing this, at least we are. The people most affected by this Kex's style of killing are not conscious of the cause of their despair, and this realization is only just now creeping up on them. It will be a long time before people notice what's happening. What will it take? Will it take being restricted from traveling internationally? Or being restricted from traveling from city to city, or even within one's own city? Or will those restrictions be shrouded in the common pretext it is for your own good? Will people notice the suppression when they no longer can use cash at their discretion? Or when they are restricted from buying certain items they want because they are over their quota? Or will they notice when the heat or air conditioning in their home is adjusted beyond their will? Or will they see this too as for everyone's benefit due to the dangers of climate change? Will they finally notice when they are arrested because they mentioned while in line at the grocery store that they were not pleased with the prices of lettuce going up and blamed the current government for inflation? It is hard to say when they will notice, if ever, that something just isn't quite right with the way the world is being handled. Right now, it is all for the good of mankind and the earth. They will blame their depression, anxiety, and the deep gnarly sense of helplessness they feel, on nearly everything else other than the real reason, that their soul is being eaten away, by the very system that promised to take care of them. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.